Billie Jean King is one of tennis's greatest ever players. And for all her stunning success in the game, it's arguably off the court where she's had the greatest impact, standing up for women's rights, for LGBTQ acceptance and equality within and beyond sport. For her, being a true champion is defined by more than just the results on the court. It's really about relationships and the people. It's not about the titles, it's about the journey. It's about all those things as you go through the process of working your backside off to be the best you can be. Uh, but it's really the people uh, that make all the difference in the world. I know what it's like to be stepped on. This is who I am. I'm an Aborigine and I'm proud of it. Stereotypes are meant to be broken. So let's break them all down. Born Billie Jean Moffat in 1943, she came of age in a working-class sports-mad family in Long Beach, California, where she took up tennis as a preteen. I have a, a younger brother, Randy Moffat, who played 12 years of professional baseball. We both loved sports when we grew up, and my mom and dad really made a difference in my life because they didn't care if we won or lost as long as we tried our best. And I, I think that made a lot of difference to Randy and me and the reason we made it uh, to the top of our profession. Billie Jean's efforts saw her turn pro while still a teenager, and she claimed her first major title in 1961, winning the doubles at Wimbledon. Because I grew up as a child, and part of my self-image was that I wanted to be the complete athlete and not just be known as a singles player or just a doubles player. I wanted to be able to do, do it all. Despite being recognized as one of the game's leading lights, she didn't win a major singles title until 1966, again at Wimbledon. 66 was a big breakthrough, and I had to beat Maria Bueno, who was one of my sheroes, to do that. When I finally won, that was such a relief, and also I finally achieved my goal of being number one since I was 11 years old, so that was really big. That success opened the floodgates, and Billie Jean, who married university sweetheart Larry King in the mid-60s, cemented her place at the apex of the women's game, winning a total of 12 Grand Slam singles titles across the following decade. The game was changing, the rackets were changing, everything was changing. You know, the 60s brought on a lot of change, and we were just a reflection of society. That's what was going on in tennis, you know, we were showing the way. While the 60s brought massive social changes, including second wave feminism, the major transformation in tennis came with the start of the Open Era in 1968, meaning the game's stars would finally earn prize money for winning tournaments like Wimbledon, which King won for three straight years in the 60s. 68 was so special because it was open tennis. I finally got a check. The first two years, I got a 45 pound gift voucher. Woohoo! You know, Fred Perry. Uh, helped me out one year so I could get home. Uh, I didn't have enough money left to get home, so uh, it was really a, a special moment. However, King only received 750 pounds after winning in London that year, while the men's champion Rod Laver took home 2,000. Billie Jean was determined that women should get a fair share of the pie. Along with a group known as the Original Nine, King was instrumental in organizing the Virginia Slims Tour and later founded the WTA to give female players their rightful seat at the table. While in 1973, her campaigning led to the US Open awarding equal money for its men's and women's champions, the first Grand Slam tournament to do so. We always wanted to be with the men on the circuit, which I don't think a lot of people realize. But the men didn't want us, is what happened. And when the men no longer wanted us on the circuit, the men aren't going to want to, any time there's prize money, they're going to say, well, it's ours. It doesn't belong to the women. And that's exactly what happened. This is the reality of the situation. We don't like it, but this is the way it is, and what are we going to do about it? Later in 73, King took on the former world number one, Bobby Riggs, in the Battle of the Sexes match. The retired Riggs was a showman who reveled in his chauvinistic approach. A fellow wrote an article in Sports Illustrated, and in that article, he asked me the question, uh, how would you do with the top girl, say Billie Jean King, for example? I said, well, I think I could beat her every day in the week and twice on Sunday. In 
what's believed to be the most watched tennis match ever, 30,000 people courtside at the Houston Astrodome and an estimated 90 million around the globe saw Billie Jean win in straight sets in what was viewed as a famous victory for feminism. And I didn't realize how fast, how quick, how agile, what a great player Billie Jean King was. She put it all together and she beat me fair and square. I just played Bobby Riggs on 73. That just took tennis to a another level. Everybody was playing. You couldn't get on a tennis court the first time ever. So that was pretty exciting. After setting up the Women's Sport Foundation in 1974, King played singles well into the 80s, where she faced possibly her toughest opponent. In a time when homophobia was the norm, public opinion swung heavily against her when it was revealed that she had an affair with a woman. After divorcing her husband a number of years later, Billie Jean finally managed to come to terms with her own sexuality, finding love with former doubles partner Ilana Kloss. As the first major female sports star to come out, King suffered. She was dropped by almost all of her sponsors and took a severe financial hit as a result. The final set. Though her honesty about her sexuality did help to change perceptions as she pointed to at the time. The one good thing I have found is how supportive people have been to me. I have gotten just thousands and thousands of letters from families, uh, from, every, from youngsters, from grandmothers and grandfathers, from everybody. Maybe people have finally changed a little. And if some good can come out of this, uh, then I will be very delighted. The winner of 39 Grand Slam titles in singles, doubles, and mixed doubles, Billie Jean is rightfully viewed as one of her sport's most impactful players, both on and off the court, with the home of the US Open in New York now named in her honor. And King's valued place in social and cultural history was demonstrated when she received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Barack Obama in 2009. Aware of her own trailblazing role in helping change society for the better, Billie Jean King remains mindful of the work still to do in creating a more just world. It's better. It can go backwards, though. So we have to always, that's, that's where the generations have to keep fighting for this equality, freedom for the LGBTQ plus community. Just for anyone, doesn't matter what, what you look like or your religion or your sexuality, we have to keep fighting for each other.